Hi there. I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to use Handbrake. Handbrake is a free piece of software that lets you rip video from disks or um, existing video files and take parts of them or all of them uh, and transcode them to MP4s that we can use to edit. Um, so let me show you how it works. So Handbrake can open up a single file or a whole folder. Um, we're going to start with a uh, file. So here in this examples folder, I have uh, a couple of types of video files and folders that uh, Handbrake can work with. Um, it can open standard MP4 files, but it can also open MKV files and transcode them to MP4, which is useful because programs like Premiere won't cut MKVs. Um, it can also open a folder like a video TS folder, which is what's on a DVD. So whether you have a DVD in a drive or just a copied video TS folder, um, Handbrake can open that and pull video off of it and make it into cuttable MP4. So I'm gonna grab this example, uh, this MKV file and open it up. So it takes a moment and then um, Handbrake will uh, open up and the structure um, of the interface is sort of tab based. So we have um, the tabs uh, along here that will be useful um, as we go. But to start with, we're gonna pick our um, title and uh, the duration. We can either choose the entire um, video or work with chapters um, or seconds, which is like time code, or frames, which gets down to the individual frame. Um, if you're working with a DVD or a file that still has chapter information in it, then the chapters can be useful. You know, you can set like from chapter one to chapter two and grab both chapters in one big MP4. But most often I find that I'm um, making clips that uh, are not chapter related. And in that case, I'm just using time code. Um, so the simplest thing uh, you can do is open up the film or the video file on its own and just take note of the time code that, that is relevant. You know, if you want a clip that's from, um, you know, 29 minutes, 32 seconds to 29 minutes, um, 42 seconds, and that's the, the 10 second clip that you really need, you can just type that in. Um, here's the beginning and here's the end. And it goes hours, colon, minutes, colon, seconds. Um, so you can set up your duration right there so you don't have to dump out any more video than you need. This is really helpful if you have a two hour long movie but you only want a couple minutes from it. There's really no reason to rip the whole thing and then keep that enormous file around and cut um, with a huge file in Premiere. It's just a whole lot um, more efficient to sort of cut the pieces you need early. Um, as we go down the interface, um, there's only a couple of things I want to point out here. I'm going to skip a lot of the options in Handbrake because there's an enormous amount of options and we don't really need them all. Um, typically for editing, you're going to want an MP4 file. Um, and I will say there is a peculiar default in uh, Handbrake where it has a tendency to make its MP4 files with the file extension .m4v. They are literally the same kind of file. If you ever accidentally make an M4V, you can straight up like rename it, delete M4V and type in MP4 after the dot and it will work. Um, but most programs do not recognize the M4V extension. Uh, so rather than remember down here in the save as every time to switch it from M4V to MP4, um, I'd encourage you to switch this in your preferences. Um, so in uh, Apple, you would pull down the handbrake toolbar menu, and then there would be preferences. On a PC, it's under tools. And then under output file, we're gonna go down to MP4 file extension and make sure it reads, always use MP4. Okay, so now we'll never have to deal with that particular problem again. Um, but the last part of this first tab that you need to be aware of is, of course, as I mentioned a moment ago, the save as. This is not only the file name that you're going to give it, but also where on your hard drive you will save it. Um, and if you need to change, you just hit browse. 
The next tab in Handbrake is Dimensions. I almost always leave this alone unless there's a very particular reason why I want it to change the size or the cropping of my video. Um, if you find Handbrake is auto cropping out letterboxing or something like that and you don't want it to, you can make custom cropping changes here or aspect ratio changes, but in general I leave this alone and if I need to make changes, I would do it later in something like Premiere. Likewise, I leave filters alone unless I have a particular piece of footage that is um, suffering from interlacing. Uh, Handbrake has a pretty good deinterlace function, but otherwise this tab um, is left at default. Now here under video, this is where I make one other important adjustment. Uh, this is my only other real complaint about Handbrake. It has a default that I don't think is useful for video editing. Um, it's probably useful for small file sizes, but not particularly good for video editing, and that is the peak frame rate. Um, programs like Premiere, I think, really prefer to see a constant frame rate. Uh, I've noticed a lot of sound sync problems um, with variable frame rates. So I want to change this to constant frame rate and make sure it's set as same as source. That means whatever the frame rate was for the video that we brought in, that's the frame rate we're going to output. Everything else in the video settings we can leave as is. Um, the only other thing I could imagine someone might want to change is this bitrate, um, which is essentially a quality versus file size slider. I think by default it's absolutely fine, but if you slide it up a bit, you can get a slightly higher um, bitrate, which is a larger file size, but slightly higher video quality. I honestly wouldn't go much higher than their setting of 20. Um, the lower the number, the better the quality is on um, on this particular slider um, because honestly if you turn it all the way up you will get an unworkably huge file size for uh, no added benefit in fact handbrake sort of jokingly calls it placebo quality um, there's nothing nothing real that's happening up here um, if you know a certain bit rate that you want uh, you can set it here instead of the variable bit rate that handbrake is going to use the audio tab can be useful if there are multiple audio tracks. Maybe you want to um, grab both or uh, grab, you know, there can be a multitude. Maybe there's a director's commentary. There's multiple languages. Um, on this particular film, there is uh, an English track and a, and a German track. Um, and one of them is in stereo. One of them's in 5.1. Um, so that can be useful. Um, we're going to leave the rest of the settings as default unless you really know why you're doing something. Um, every so often, if the audio tracks are separated out in a file, you may be able to grab only the center channel or you know only a certain um, uh, audio track, and that could be somehow useful to sort of unmix a mix, um, but that's only true if the video file or disk you have allows it. Finally, if you're working with a video that has subtitles, um, whether it's on a DVD or, or part of an MKV file. Um, here you can make decisions about what happens with those subtitles. Um, they can either be um, ignored or only use the ones that are what's called forced. This is like if, if there's a character in a film that is always subtitled, you know, it's an alien and it speaks a language none of the characters know, but for every version of the film, there is subtitles. That's what uh, Handbrake calls forced. Um, but then um, there are other movies like this one um, where I just don't speak the language that the movie was shot in. And so I want all the subtitles, not just the forced ones. Um, so in this case, I would want to take off forced only. I also want to pull down and instead of for an audio scan, which is an attempt at automation, I want to choose the particular subtitles that I'm after. I happen to know that I want the first track of English subtitles here. I think the second one is probably the director's commentary. Um, the only way you could really find this out if it's not clearly labeled is by doing a test and, and trial and error. Lastly, I want to make sure I have burn in checked. This is um, essentially because I want the subtitles as an image, you know, 
burned in, so to speak, to the frames of the video, um, not as some kind of separate um, file that's only available to a playback um, software like VLC or something like that. Because if we're cutting this in Premiere um, and I want the subtitles, then I want the subtitles to be part of the image. So that's what burn in means. The last tab is about chapters. If you're ripping from a file that has chapter information and you wanna keep that chapter information, you can make those decisions here. Um, for my purposes, I'm pulling something so that I can make clips maybe to teach with or maybe to remix into a found footage piece so the chapters for me are irrelevant. When I've made all my decisions, I go up to either start in code or add to queue. Add to queue can be helpful if you're going to be doing a lot of clips. Um, I can add this one to queue and then I can open up another file um, and Handbrake won't forget all the things that I did to this file. So if I open up a folder this time and do that video TS folder off of a DVD, um, then I can go back, make changes to this film, um, choose you know my chapters, just maybe chapter one, um, and then add this to queue. If I wanna see what's in my queue, I click queue, and I see the list of jobs and their associated settings. And then when I'm ready to run it, I just hit start in code. It'll take a few minutes, you'll see a progress bar along the bottom, and eventually it will dump out to the place that you chose. Um, and you'll have MP4s of the uh, pieces of the film clips or DVDs that you chose. All of those would work fine to be edited in Premiere or to be used as is, um, uploaded to YouTube, uh, put in a PowerPoint, etc.